Oh, look at everybody. Good evening, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hi, Dave. Great to see Great everybody. To everybody. Well, that's Dave Snyder with our comment. The guy that's walking is Doug Scholar. Is Jim Allison here by any chance? He He's uh, the host of this party when we have it in real life in Sacramento. I'm really sorry that we don't get to have it with him in real life uh, this time. Good evening, Mike. Mike Bass, yeah. <laughs> Well, I will start with welcoming people. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this reception. I sure wish that we could be at, at Jim's place in Sacramento, but we have a pandemic and so we are holding it online. The advantage is that we get to include people from all over the state. We get to include people who we wouldn't normally be able to include like our board chair, Cynthia, for example. Uh, so, um, you have to supply your own pizza and drinks, but we will supply some inspiration and we'll facilitate some camaraderie. I think it's gonna be a great event. After some introductions and housekeeping, we will hear from a bunch of people on our team and others who made a big difference in 2020. We're gonna start with a little review of 2020 uh, and then we'll hear about our plans for 2021. We'll have time for some discussion in the large group, and then we'll have time for some breakout groups. Uh, we're going to create some breakout groups based on our campaigns, and we're going to have some uh, breakout groups that you can select yourself just to have whatever conversation you want to have. In order to do that, you need to have the latest Zoom app. Uh, keep a, keep a, an eye on the chat for uh, some more advice on how to make sure you can take advantage of that uh, latest technology. Right around six o'clock after the breakout rooms, we'll come back and we will adjourn the official part of the meeting with a discussion about ways you can help, ways that you can help make the vision that we talk about all hour a reality in 2021. And that includes financially, of course. First, I wanna take a moment to uh, make some special introductions. Um, I can't tell all who's here. Uh, is Senator Scott Weiner here? Yeah, there you are. Senator, hi. I'm here. How hi. Are you? Good, Thank good. you for coming. Appreciate it. Do you want to say you want to say a word? You don't have to. Oh, sure. Um, no, I want to uh, thank you uh, for Dave for uh, hosting this and thank you to Calbike for everything that you're doing. A special thank you to Calbike for endorsing my reelection to the Senate. I'm very appreciative uh, of that. It's been such a pleasure to uh, work with Dave and with the team uh, for the last four years, um, whether it's our crusade uh, to get Caltrans to uh, actually focus on safe biking and walking and waiting and, and waiting for the bus um, and uh, doing legislation around there and pounding our head against the wall a little bit, but ultimately we hope make some progress. Um, the work we've done around transit funding um, or the work uh, uh, to make sure that we can make it faster and easier and less process intensive to put down bike lanes, um, which is something we worked on this year. Um, it's just been a real uh, pleasure. I know we're already in conversation on how we can work together. Uh, next year, we, uh, you know, we need to move towards, towards progressive transportation policy, sustainable transportation policy in California. Uh, we need to stop with the focus on on cars and cars only and understand that we are a multimodal state and coming from San Francisco is a little bit more of a challenge in Sacramento than in San Francisco City Hall. Uh, but I think we can make some progress and uh, I just want to just say to you that Calbike is an extremely effective organization with amazing expertise and uh, it's just a real honor to work together. So again, thank you for everything. 
Thank you, Senator. It is a pleasure to work with you as well. And, and though the Complete Streets Bill was vetoed, I think that uh, it, it drew a line in the sand and it laid down some expectations that they are meeting so far. We, uh, I'm not, I can't say 100%, but uh, so far so good. Uh, I think it was a really uh, valuable effort. I invited uh, Assembly Member Elect Steve Bennett here. Uh, there you are, sir. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting you uh, uh, in, in bike gear in Ventura County, and uh, we are looking forward to working with you as a champion of bicycling. Uh, as, as involved as you are, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for coming, and, and if you'd like to say a, a word or two, you have to unmute yourself first. We muted everybody upon entry, so. Uh, there we go. Well, thank you very much for the invitation uh, to this uh, uh, evening uh, here, Dave. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's particularly a pleasure to uh, uh, get to hear the comments from Senator Wiener, and I look forward to, to uh, connecting with you if we ever get to spend time in Sacramento. We will, or, you know. we will. And, and congratulations, Steve, congratulations. Thank you very much, and same to you for your reelection and, and all of your leadership on uh, all of the multimodal uh, approaches that we need and stuff. Uh, so CalBike, um, I've become increasingly familiar with CalBike, uh, particularly through my involvement with Cycle California Coast, which is a collective effort between the counties of Santa Barbara County and Ventura County to try to improve bicycle infrastructure and make uh, our areas more bicycle friendly. Um, and uh, CalBike has just been uh, a, a very good resource and what I think I, I most want to learn more about is the effectiveness of CalBike in terms of uh, legislation and lobbying in Sacramento, where I will now turn my attention. We've been pretty successful in Ventura County and getting the county to be sure to pave broader shoulders whenever they do repaving uh, to try to make sure that they have a, a reasonable shoulder there for bicyclists. Uh, I'd love to uh, talk with Senator Wiener about that kind of legislation at the state level to, you know, so some kind of requirement for local governments to take that into consideration and stuff. So, uh, Dave, thank you very much. Heard great things about CalBike. I look forward to working with CalBike more. And I think uh, Senator Wiener, Wiener uh, is probably as good of endorsement as you're going to get in terms of that. So, thank you. Thank you. So, I, I would hate to fail to introduce an elected uh, official if you're here and I didn't catch that. So with apologies, if you are an elected official and would like to introduce yourself, please uh, speak up. Okay, now I get to introduce another uh, special person. Our board chair, Cynthia Rose, is the longtime leader of Santa Monica Spoke. That is the bicycling and, and, and sustainable transportation advocacy organization in Santa Monica, a chapter of the Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition uh, on which she serves uh, as a board member as well. And uh, as board chair, she's going to uh, give you a little greeting and introduce any other board members who might be present. Cynthia, hi, nice to see you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm, I know we have board members that are due. I'm not sure I see anybody in the uh, chat room yet, but I do want to say thank you to our electeds for joining us and for the kind words that you've given us and for the support that you have um, provided in the past and that we look forward to working with you in the future. Uh, I Again, looking through, I don't see any of our board members here yet. Again, they are on their way. So I am, we have a lot of um, great things to share today. So we're going to get right on into the program. So I won't take up any more of your time now. And I'll um, be talking to you later at the end. Thanks, Dave. Great. Thank you. So uh, let me uh, introduce the, our staff who's here. Just, just say hi, y'all. Um, in no particular order, Jamie Smith is our admin manager who is uh, handling a really difficult transition of our, of our uh, uh, systems, our background systems right now and, and helping us out a lot. Kevin Claxton is our development associate. He's uh, the tech person today. Forrest Barnes is uh, our active transportation planner 
uh, working in the Central Valley in Bakersfield and Fresno. He works with Asha, who is here, um, Asha Chandy, who is the uh, programs manager for Bike Bakersfield. Jared Sanchez is our uh, uh, policy leader. Philip Arca is uh, on on special duty as a uh, deputy director to help us get some of our operational systems uh, working super smoothly. Uh, Nikolai Kreidler and Laura McKinney are two hotshot consultants that are helping us with our uh, communications. And uh, Jen Guitart is our uh, uh, most veteran uh, person besides me here. Uh, she's our development director. And um, she's going to start by talking about um, uh, what we did in 2020. I'm going to share a screen. Say hi, Jen. Say hi to Jen, everybody. So when COVID started, our legislative agenda pretty much died. And any bill that wasn't related to COVID or that wasn't essential, considered essential to, to COVID response um, was, was uh, withdrawn. We, and we also realized that suddenly there was this new reality of a lot, of, a lot more people were biking. And, and there were a lot of people who were new to biking or returning. And so we, we, put, we put a whole bunch of resources up on our website just generally for biking and also for biking under COVID. Another thing that we worked on initially under the pandemic was that we connected people with programs around the state that were matching people with, who needed a bike with people who had an extra bike. Another thing that we did that was really important was that we got the Department of Public Health to include bike shops as an essential business. Initially, they were including uh, car mechanics as essential, but not bike shops. And so we made sure that they clarified the stay at home order um, and, you know, to make sure that that bike shops were considered essential and that communities around the state knew that that bike shops were allowed to be open. Another thing that we put together was uh, a how to guide on implementing slow streets. And we used Oakland as a case study. They closed 74 miles of streets uh, throughout Oakland to car traffic or, you know, or recommended that people use other routes so that there, there's this whole network um, that's still there of, of streets where people can bike and walk safely and more socially distant. And so we put together, a, we sort of interviewed people from those organizations and from the city um, on how to do that effectively and, and, you know, to really get great community engagement, to have good feedback me mechanisms and um, building on existing campaigns and bike plans. All of this celebration about open streets seemed out of place for a lot of Californians, though. For whom the streets are not safe, not because of traffic, but because of the color of their skin. The protests in support of Black Lives Matter affected all of us, hopefully, and definitely affected CalBike. We consulted with a lot of our local partners. We consulted with civil rights groups and some of the leading transportation advocates advocacy groups around the country to develop a set of proposals to get police out of the role of traffic enforcement. We developed six proposals. Some of them are long-term visions and some of them are things that we can work on right away. For example, the Office of Traffic Safety gives grants to police departments for their officers to do overtime, very often giving tickets to people on bikes rolling through stop signs in quiet residential neighborhoods as a supposed traffic safety thing. Uh, that's something that we can uh, work on fixing this year. Uh, also, we can work to decriminalize common behaviors that everybody who walks and bikes does that are illegal and result in unnecessary interactions with police. We're gonna talk more about that when we get to our 2021 agenda.
Another project that we did this year that was really exciting was that we created a quick build guide in collaboration with Alta Planning and Design. Quick build, for those who don't know, is a way of planning and building bike infrastructure that is obviously fast and also inexpensive. So the idea is that you use sort of inexpensive, sometimes temporary materials like posts or planters or, or paint to, um, to create, to very quickly, um, you know, get a bike project on the ground in a matter of weeks or months instead of years. We don't want to wait five or 10 years to have safe bike infrastructure when we can do it much faster. And the other thing about quick build is that now is a really great time to, to do it because uh, city coffers are empty because of COVID and reduced tax revenue and quick builds much cheaper than traditional bike infrastructure. Um, the other thing is that so many pe more people are biking in some communities right now, and it's a really great time to sort of show, uh, you know, show policymakers and show communities around the state a, a, a better and easier and faster way to get bike infrastructure on the ground so that people will feel safe and comfortable while they're biking. Um, so we created this guide and, and it's, it's got two pieces to it. There's a sort of a brochure that, that advocates can use to quickly educate policymakers about quick build and sort of sell them on the idea. And then there's also a 77 page guide that's really thorough that's for planners and engineers to consult so that they can see what are the different kinds of materials that you can use to create quick build and what are some of the considerations to have a successful quick build project um, and a, a fast, a fast quick build project. Um, so we're distributing this guide to policymakers and advocates and um, and planners all across California, in collaboration with all. Hi everyone. The bike boom was seen early on in the pandemic, where new and existing riders were turning to bikes for getting around safely. One of the most important yet vulnerable sites for this boom has been in community bike shops. Community bike shops empower people to build and repair their own bikes. Often located in disadvantaged communities, they usually provide training, shared tools, and a supportive atmosphere. Community bike shops are an important transportation, public health, and economic development resource. Cal Bike consultant Laura McCammy created a critical investigative article interviewing a wide variety of bike shop workers to assess their operations and how they're grappling with the pandemic. What this led to was a, a short campaign uh, for Cal Bike to lift up community bike organizations. While there are many things that each of us as individuals can do to support community bike shops, these vital organizations also need institutional support. Here are a few of the avenues that we pursued. Awareness. At Cal Bike, we'll be looking and we did look for ways to shine a light on California's community bike shops and elevate their visibility in the community. Number two, government support. And the last was around funding. Although many community bike shops have an operating model that allows them to stay open on a shoestring budget, money could give the ability to hire paid staff to ensure operations are safe. Others might be able to move to a safer or more permanent shop space. So from this article, it led to our, our next step, um, a webinar that we held um, where we had more than 25 or uh, 25 attendees to join across um, the state's community bike shops. We put our heads together, uh, guided by expert governmental advice on how to safely continue the necessary work during the COVID-19 pandemic. Lori Waters from the California Transportation Commission helped inform us of potential ways shops can connect to funding opportunities. It is clear that community bike shops are natural allies for advocacy organizations. These grassroots organizations are able to reach communities whose voices are too often left out of the conversation about bicycle safety. We will continue this work for lifting up community bike shops during and beyond the pandemic. Thank you. I just want to make sure I'm sharing the, the screen uh, properly. Um, just to make sure that uh, uh, 
you all can hear it okay. I am about to uh, introduce uh, Ann Thomas of Shasta Living Streets. The California Bicycle Coalition Education Fund is a sponsor of a couple of great projects. Uh, the amazing one in Redding, California, Shasta County uh, is, is working to uh, help uh, uh, folks in Redding, a small, relatively small town and relatively conservative, uh, really get that bicycling is an economic development tool and important for public health. And Thomas is doing amazing work up there. I'm gonna back this up just a second. What happened last year? We stayed focused, planning breakthrough ventures for Reading and Shasta County. Construction is on track for our Shasta Bike Depot, a bike station and trail tourism and Reading Bike Share, located adjacent to the Reading Transit Center and directly on the downtown section of a protected bikeway loop that will connect more than 68,000 people in and out of downtown Reading. Um, we uh, are also working in the Central Valley with the High Speed Rail Authority. They, as you know, are building a high speed rail in, in uh, the Central Valley as a first segment to a statewide system. And they wanted to help the cities there plan uh, their station areas for access. And so they gave the cities grants to plan pedestrian and supposedly bike access within a half mile radius of the station, a station area planning grant. And uh, we noted that uh, you can bike a lot further than a half mile, you're missing an opportunity to get people to those stations by bike. And so they awarded us a grant to help uh, a handful of uh, Central Valley cities, uh, Fresno, Merced, Bakersfield, uh, figure out how to do that. We're using a fantastic tool that Forrest Barnes uh, can uh, tell us about. So Forrest. Yeah, thanks so much for that introduction. Um, I am here with Asha Chandy from Bike Bakersfield, and um, we want to talk to you all about some of our work in the Central Valley that really ties in with our 2021 uh, organizational initiatives. So the first thing I want to talk about for a moment is CalBikes assisting uh, the city of Bakersfield with a state-funded active transportation grant to implement a bike share system in Bay central Bakersfield, um, work with the city to ensure um, equitable and affordable access to bike share all around the central part of Bakersfield and ensuring that it's uh, accessible to get to community identified destinations. And then Asha is going to talk about some of our low traffic network planning work. Yeah, so Bike Bakersfield was asked by CalBike to partner on planning a low stress network in central Bakersfield. Um, we, a lot of our work included community engagement with target populations that we identified, like homeless residents, foster youth, public transit users, students. Um, and this outreach directly translated to the route recommendations that were um, provided in our report. Yeah, and so keep an eye out in 2021 for that. Um, we're also completing the same process in Fresno and Merced, and we're extremely excited that some of our work in the Central Valley um, is gonna inform Talbike's push to do this work statewide with both complete low stress bike networks and uh, publicly supported bike share and micro mobility systems. All right, thanks, Dave. Yeah, you're welcome, Forrest, thank you. Um, uh, another project that we sponsor is the Motherload Bicycle Coalition. They're uh, working in the uh, Northern San Joaquin Valley and the, the Sierra uh, foothills. Uh, Rob Williams is uh, their um, leader there, Rob. During the last three months, I have been actively out on a, uh, the community using phones because of the COVID-19, but talking to people, civic leaders, um, tourism directors, um, economic development directors, business owners about the possibility of encouraging people to ride bikes 
in the Central Valley, the foothills and the Sierras. And I am finding that people are excited about the opportunities to get more people riding bikes uh, on our rural roads and traveling by bike, staying over the weekend and riding bikes in our areas. So I have been busy talking with people and soliciting support for cycling tourism. Uh, yeah, thank you, Rob. You know, um, you mentioned that project. I uh, have my introductions in slightly the wrong order. Uh, Rob does two things. He's the um, one of the leaders of the Motherload Bicycle Coalition, and he's the project manager for this project that we're doing with the Tuolumne County Transportation Commission to promote bike tourism in five counties, San Joaquin, Calaveras, Alpine, uh, Stanislaus, and... Uh, Tuolumne. Um, the idea is to get the business leaders in those communities to understand that bike tourism and bicycling uh, can bring some economic development and dollars to their community and is yet another reason to make their roads safe. It's kind of a tricky way to get them to uh, work on safe streets uh, for reasons other than just to help those silly bicyclists. So um, we're excited uh, by the, the success of the project so far. Rob has just been doing a great job despite the pandemic uh, reaching out to people. Another person with the Motherload Bike Coalition uh, is Carl Baker. And, and Carl uh, can tell you a little bit about what uh, he's doing on behalf of uh, the uh, Motherload Bike Coalition as soon as, uh, as, soon as it comes up. Uh, accomplishments now have been advocacy. We commented on the Tuolumne County Active Transportation Plan, uh, the District 10 Active Transportation Plan, and uh, we made comments on a couple of projects for funding through the shop to add complete streets funding. City and county have, you know, through their boards made it clear to the Transportation Council that they prefer uh, trails and a kind of a visitor experience emphasis for active transportation. And the Bike Coalition made it very clear that uh, that shouldn't come at the expense of getting people to the store, to work, to schools, to county services. And our, our comments were taken and I think we made a dent. Um, we have a lot of work to do with the local agencies to change that emphasis. Great. Thank you, Carl. So um, let me stop sharing the screen here. We are unsurprisingly running uh, behind uh, a little bit. So I'm going to skip the group discussion about what we did in 2020. I believe that Jen has posted if she hasn't, could you please post a link to the uh, blog blog post that summarizes everything that you just heard? Uh, I want to get to our 2021 agenda. That's what we came here to talk about. And that's what I'm uh, excited to uh, discuss with you and get your feedback and uh, opinion on. So let's jump right into that. Um, you can see that a lot that we did in 2020 is, is feeding into... Uh, what we want to accomplish in, in 2021. Um, Forrest mentioned a couple of things. One was the bikeway network analysis that they are doing. They are using a really neat tool to analyze how uh, an improvement in one part of town improves the connectivity of destinations throughout the town. It's really important because a lot of cities and counties, as you know, will be very proud of themselves for spending a lot of money on some really nice bike facilities, but they won't do the little thing at the intersection that is necessary to make one bike lane, one really pretty bike lane, connect to another really, really pretty bike lane a quarter of a mile away because they don't want to take out a traffic lane on a busy arterial. We are hoping to get the state to develop some kind of program to incentivize cities and counties to make those kind of improvements. They, they ought to uh, be building whole bike networks all at once and they ought to be doing all of the pieces that are necessary to 
make uh, uh, your network work, not just the easy, uh, pretty pieces. Um, and the other thing that Forrest mentioned was the um, uh, bike share that they're working on in uh, Bakersfield. So uh, bike share, as you know, is almost always a private enterprise in California. And the bike share companies aren't making uh, much money and they are not providing bike share or scooter share for that matter to the community at a price that's affordable and to communities that really need it. Those last mile systems ought to be integrated with public transit. You ought to be able to get a bike or a scooter with your transit pass at the same price and on the same terms. We are hoping to create a program in uh, the uh, state transportation, uh, public transportation account that will support transit agencies that uh, want to uh, do that. Um, and then uh, there's two other uh, big campaigns that I wanna uh, talk about, but let me uh, spend uh, just a minute on, on some of the, the, the little things that add up. So, uh, you know, Senator Wiener, I mentioned the complete streets work that we're doing with Caltrans. The new director there is, um, he's, he's got the right idea and he's on our side. I sincerely believe that. I'll tell you a little a story to justify it. When they came out with the uh, last round of SHOP proposals. SHOP is the State Highway Operation and Protection Program. It's the largest pot of funds that they spend and it's meant for uh, only uh, repair and rehabilitation. And you know they, they often cheat about that, but uh, it's mostly that's what it's for. Uh, they have done historically a really bad job of taking advantage of those opportunities to make safety improvements. The staff at Caltrans wanted to do uh, kind of a big thing and at the last minute pull uh, $50 million out of the proposed set of proposals, proposed set of programs to make safety improvements on those projects. And the director said, why only 50, why not 100? So that's why I think that he's on our side. Now it's $100 million in a $4.2 billion program. So we're, we're not talking uh, you know, massive change here, but we're talking change and, and, and we're talking uh, an agency that's willing to admit that it messed up so badly that it did an unprecedented thing and, and pulled $100 million from the program at the last minute and, and they couldn't approve the, the full program when they sent it to the commission. So we're working internally with Caltrans on that. It, it means a lot of work. It's not gonna be anything that shows up in any kind of fancy way or any kind of legislation, but it's the kind of things that, that we can do because you all support us. It, it's, it's very valuable to make sure that we watchdog Caltrans and that their process for the next shop is good. That's when we'll know whether or not we are successful or not is uh, when they produce the next shop. Another example of, of a small thing that we're doing is uh, around the design manual. The Caltrans design manual is terrible and we meet with the d director of the division of design to uh, get them to, to um, change the rules so that, for example, we don't have uh, door zone bike lanes or uh, that we can go down to a 10 foot lanes in order to put in a bike lane, which right now require exceptions. Um, that's kind of work that we do through our administrative advocacy. So that's kind of the, the, the background stuff. I mentioned the shared mobility campaign. I mentioned bike, bikeway networks. There's two more that I want to mention and I'm going to pass this one off to Jared to talk a little bit about our work to decriminalize certain behaviors that everybody does on a bike and everybody does when they walk, but which are illegal and which result in uh, unnecessary interactions with police that are tragic for some of our uh, fellow citizens here in California. So uh, Jared, do you wanna um, spend a minute um, telling folks about uh, the campaign and what we're planning? 
Yeah, sure. I thought you were going to play the video that I recorded, but you mean just live. Yeah, right? yeah sorry. I didn't get a chance to go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no problem. Um, I'll keep it. I'll try to keep it brief. Um, so I'll say that uh, we sent a survey out to our local bike affiliates and partners for uh, their suggestions on what we should pursue in our 2021 agenda. Um, a few of them are what Dave already mentioned, um, but one of the top priorities that they highlighted was exactly this, the decriminalization of walking and, and biking. Um, and what do we mean by decriminalization? Um, the two most important pieces that came up for us um, were around the, of course, the pedestrian side and, and the cyclist side. For the pedestrian side, um, there is a long history um, that you all might be familiar with um, of mid-block crossing and um, making it illegal to quote unquote jaywalk. Um, so this is on uh, the California books um, along with many local ordinances uh, making it illegal to cross the street um, if you're not in an unmarked or marked intersection or crosswalk that is. Um, so starting off with a, a full repeal of that, um, which is a very audacious uh, move to make. But as Dave mentioned, these are not only very common and harmless behaviors in, in many ways, but they can be very, very tragic and lead to, to death, especially for black folks um, across the state, um, which we see in across the country, um, the use of jaywalking uh, as a pretext to pull folks over or to target them um, and their actions in the public street and roadway. Um, the other one uh, around the cycling aspect of it um, that you all might be familiar with is trying uh, again uh, to get the Idaho stop um, passed in California. Um, and that's um, the ability for cyclists to uh, roll through stop signs um, without um, stopping um, before checking, of course, um, that the roadway is safe and um, not in the way of, of traffic. Uh, this uh, bill idea was pursued a couple years ago without success. Um, there was a lot of opposition to it. Um, this time around, um, I'd say there's a lot of precedence. Um, just recently, within the last two years, Washington State and Oregon uh, were able to pass a statewide uh, Idaho stop type bill, uh, in addition to what's already been passed in Idaho, Arkansas, um, Delaware in some aspect and also in Colorado as well in, in some shape of it. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to couching that aspect, which you all might be very familiar with and, and passionate about. Um, also within this idea around criminal justice reform, really building up off the energy um, that we saw in early summer um, around Black Lives Matter protests and uh, the suspicion that I have so far that there will be a, a plethora of these types of criminal justice bills in 2021. Um, and for us to, to step up on the walking and biking piece, um, I think it's important, not just for staff and, and leadership, but for all of you and many others who um, expect um, all of advocates um, for, around this space and the equity space to, to really step up on, on these issues. So I can stop there. Um, I don't know if Dave, you wanted me to, to speak a little more on that. No, um, we'll uh, maybe take a, a clarifying question and then you'll be leading the discussion in the breakout group for everyone who wants to join you for a more uh, serious discussion about that. So um, uh, that's the best way to follow up. And then, and then finally, there is um, uh, a proposal to let Californians get their hands on e-bikes with some government support in the same way that the government helps people buy e-cars. Uh, it's uh, money can go a lot further to help people uh, replace their car trips with some kind of electric transportation and which happens to be healthy and safe and fun too. So uh, states uh, all over the country, all over the world, as you know, are doing this. It's about time California uh, followed suit. Um, we have found uh, an author for this uh, proposal. I'm really glad that Assembly member Tasha Horner Horvath has agreed to uh, author the proposal for us again. And I need to find it. Hi.
Hi, everyone. I'm Tasha Berner Horvath, and I'm honored to represent the communities of Encinitas, Carlsbad, Oceanside Vista, and Camp Pendleton in the State Assembly. What you may not know about me is that I'm a big fan of biking. A ride around the neighborhood has become a favorite way for my kids and I to get out of the house and reset for half an hour in the middle of our busy day, especially during COVID. Not only is riding a fun and healthy form of exercise, biking short distances instead of driving is also good for the planet because of all the emissions that are avoided. Biking to work or to school is a win, win, win. It's great for the environment, reduces traffic, and makes for healthier, happier communities. That's why I introduced a bill last year to create incentives for people to buy e-bikes, but unfortunately we had to put it on hold so the legislature could focus on responding to COVID-19 emergency. In the upcoming session, I look forward to working with the California Bicycle Coalition to make this bill happen and get riders out on the streets. Thank you so much for your support, and let's bike on! Thank you, Tasha. We're uh, really excited to, to have uh, her support for um, uh, this bill. We are uh, looking forward to crafting something that, that will support mostly uh, low-income people to get their hands on e-bikes. The One of the criticisms, and rightfully so, of the existing uh, program to help e-cars is that it, it, it helps uh, uh, rich people buy Teslas. We need to electrify our vehicle fleet, no doubt about it. Uh, but let's let's make sure that we are focused on uh, the uh, social impact uh, with regards to equity as we do so. So that's it. Those are the four uh, main uh, campaigns. We're going to have breakout rooms for three of them. Breakout room for the shared mobility that is uh, getting shared bikes and scooters integrated with public transit, a breakout room for decriminalization and a breakout room for e-bike purchase incentives. Jared will be in the decrim room, uh, Forrest will be in the shared mobility one and I'll be in the e-bike purchase incentives one. And then uh, as we announced, we are going to uh, create some uh, custom breakout rooms. There's just uh, um, uh, um, uh, just some um, rooms that you can uh, select yourself um, and have a conversation about whatever you want to have about. So uh, with that, Kevin, why don't you step in and explain to people how uh, this is going to work? Sure. Hey, everyone. Um, so like Dave just mentioned, we're going to be trying out uh, one of Zoom's newer features, the breakout rooms. So in a second here, I'm going to uh, click this button that's going to open the rooms. For those of you with the desktop or mobile app, you'll be able to self-select which room you'd like to go into and um, hear that kind of focused conversation. Again, we've got shared mobility, decriminalization of biking and walking, e-bike subsidies, and then we've got an additional room for open discussion. The catch with the desktop and mobile app is that you need to have a, newest, a newer version uh, so you might want to take this opportunity to update. You can go into the menu at the top of your app and scroll down to check for updates. Took me about a minute earlier today. If you don't use the desktop app or mobile app and you're watching through your internet browser right now, you won't have the option to select your own room. So what we'll, we're going to ask you to do is um, just type into the chat, move me to whatever breakout room you'd like us to move you to, and we'll try to get you in there as quick as we can. So I'm going to go ahead and open those up right now. And um, you can go ahead and move around, type into the chat where you'd like to go, and we'll try to get you slotted into the right place. Did you explain that, that people have to click on the zero? I was, I was not paying attention. Oh, yeah. Uh, you should see a little um, breakout room icon at the bottom toolbar. If you open that up, you'll see a, a new dialogue. And then uh, you'll see the, the title of the room, say e-bike subsidies, and to the right of that will be a number. If you hover over that number, it'll say join, and you'll be able to move to the room of your choice.
And for anyone who missed it, we are um, moving into some breakout rooms for the next few minutes. There should be an icon called breakout rooms along the bottom of your screen there, which you can open up. And that's gonna give you the option to join a couple of these rooms. You'll see the title of the room, for example, shared mobility, and then to the right, a number. If you hover over that number, you should be able to join. If you're not seeing those options, just go ahead and um, type into the chat where you'd like to go and I'll get you moved to the right spot. Hey all, if you're just uh, joining the meeting, we're taking a few minutes to have some more focused discussions in some small breakout rooms. There's a small icon in your toolbar, at the bottom of the Zoom app that says breakout rooms, which should open up a new small window. You'll be able to move into those uh, one of those rooms if you like. If that prompt isn't working for you or the button's not quite working, feel free to just uh, chat the name of the room over to me and I can make sure you get to the right spot.
Uh, is our chat room done? Yep, the everyone's going to be returning in the next minute and a half about. That, that was pretty short. I wanted to get something in. I guess I couldn't. Major culture shift, for sure. That was quick. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Uh, <laughs> brutal, brutal. Yeah, that wasn't enough. That was two minutes in the in the. Well, break. I tell you what, um, we promised we'd end at six, and we will end at six. But uh, Kevin, uh, we can go back right uh, after after six o'clock. Yeah, so so we'll be able to go back to our breakout rooms, uh, and and we'll keep the the Zoom call open for another fifteen minutes at least. So um, uh, hold on to your 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 thought, Maureen, and I'm sure others of you in other rooms had had a, a rude interruption. Uh, anyway, so thank you all so much. Are, are we all back? I want to express a lot of hope and optimism that we can get this uh, agenda passed. I, I, um, I think that the, the appetite for bigger change is greater than it ever has been. People have done things in 2020, we've made policy changes and street changes in 2020 that we previously imagined impossible. So I, I think that, that it's okay to think big and I'm confident that we can get some significant uh, um, progress on all of these things and, and get a win in, in uh, the e-bike purchase incentive and others and the decrim at least, for example. So I'm super excited, but we need resources to do it. Jen uh, Guitart is our development director and uh, she's in charge of getting those resources for us. Jen, how, how are we gonna pay for all this? You're muted. Somehow my little trick for unmuting isn't working. Can you guys hear me now? Yep. Um, I am really passionate about CalBike and about the work we do and about getting enough resources for our policy team to do the amazing work that they do. But I'd like to, to call on a few people who are supporters of ours to just share a little bit about why they support CalBike. And I'd like to start with Sharon. Here we go. I had to figure out how to unmute. Well, I really thank you all for the work you do. I'm a physician. I um, believe in promoting a healthy lifestyle. I tried to lead, lead by example when I was working and I rode my bike to work as often as I could. And um, I really just feel strongly that we need to preserve the health of the community and our planet and everything you do just uh, supports that vision. And I thank you for, for your, all your work and efforts. Thank you so much, Sharon. Um, and I, now I think, uh, Stefan, are you here? I think I saw you. Yes, I'm here. Hi, Jim. Hi. 
Stefan is a board member and also supporter. Yes, and I've been a board member for quite some time. I'm retired now, but for over 30 years, um, I was a regional planner here in San Diego, dealing mostly with active transportation stuff. And I learned early on in my job that a lot of the things I was trying to get, get accomplished would be helped by changes in policy and law at the state level. And so that's how I got involved with CalBike. And, uh, and then once I became involved and I saw the quality of the people and the, the hard work that was going on to, to make the kind of changes that needed to be made, um, this was just something that I had to support. And as I've been able to support them more and more over the years, I've been really happy to do it and uh, encourage all of you to think seriously about what you can do to keep this good work going forward. Great, thank you, Stefan. And finally, Amit, are you here? I am, hello, everybody. Hello, everyone, can you hear me? Hello, yes, hi, we can hear Excellent. you. Excellent, great. Hello. Guys, I, I just, I wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you for, um, for your support. I wanna say thank you to everybody for being here and for being a part of this. Listen, CalBike is so important to um, I think each and every one of us for, uh, for a number of reasons. For me, that, that one of the biggest reasons is, is this, hey, such, hey, 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 say hi, say hi. Hi. <laughs> one, of, one of the biggest reasons is, is this guy right here. And we go on these amazing bicycle rides. We have incredible adventures together. And, um, and, and so to have, you know, a safe, safe cycling infrastructure and to, to um, to, to, to feel comfortable um, on, on uh, roadways and paths wherever we go is so important and so crucial. So I just want to say thank you to, um, to, to, um, to the entire CalBike team and, and also say thank you to, to everybody who's here tonight who supports us. And, um, and, and really without your support, you're, you're the lifeblood of the organization. We, we couldn't do what we do. So, so I just want to say thank you to everybody for being a part of this and um, for, for helping make the future of cycling safer, right? So, so it's really important. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amit. That was a wonderful addition <laughs> to the end of our presentation. And um, I, I just, I know we're a little over time, so I'm gonna be really, really quick, but it's been a challenging year with COVID. Our amazing supporters have kept us thriving. And I just wanna ask you all, if, if you haven't made a donation yet this year, uh, if you can dig extra deep to make up for those people who haven't been able to continue to support us because of COVID, because there are a lot of people who are impacted financially. Um, so thank you all so much. This was fabulous. And I think, Dave, are you going to just wrap it up for everybody? I just want to say thank you, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to work with um, uh, my amazing a team and um, with all of y'all, you know, every, every day I get a call out of the blue that that reminds me of people's passion for uh, better communities with bicycling. And I, I'm very fortunate that I get to do the work that I do. Uh, I really wish that we could be in person and I really wish that we could just keep hanging out, but uh, I will hang out for a while in the e-bike room. So Dave, if I could step in for a second, just- um... Sure. Give my thanks again to everyone who is here tonight and, and reaffirm what Amit said that, that you all are the lifeblood of this organization and thank you so much for being here. And thank you, Jen, and all of the staff for all of their work that they've done for this entire year and getting us through this pandemic. I know as being a, an advocate at a local organization, how important the support is from our regional partners, uh, but also from CalBike. We can't do it without it, it, it makes our, our lives very much more difficult if we can't do it without uh, leadership in Sacramento. And thank you to our electeds that are here today, which uh, uh, again, without whom we can't really move this agenda forward. So thank you everyone for being here. And thank you staff and thank you to our board for their leadership and um, onward. Thank you, Dave. Thank, thank you, Cynthia. Cynthia. Okay, um, I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody. Uh, and um, if you want to hang out with me, I'll be in the e-bike room.
<laughs> it uh, looks like I can send everyone right back to your breakout room from earlier. So I'll go ahead and, and open them up and then I'll hang out here in the main room. If you have any other questions, I can try to point you in the right direction. So thanks y'all for joining us. Thank you, Kevin.